Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In our last lecture, uh, we were discussing about various characterization techniques that are employed uh, for characterizing transition metal carbene complexes. And in that regard, what we had seen that uh, various methods, uh, including uh, that of X ray diffraction as well as uh, IR, Raman and carbon 13 NMR were extensively used in characterizing transition metal carbene complexes. Uh, uh, the techniques uh, that we discussed in our last lecture was uh, single crystal X-ray diffraction Uh, then uh, IR, Raman spectroscopy as well as 13C uh, NMR uh, spectro uh, spectroscopy. And what we had seen that these uh, techniques uh, are extremely good at uh, characterizing various transition metal carbene complexes of both types uh, that is the uh, Fisher and the Strock types. Uh, X-ray uh, gives a, a clear uh, idea as to the uh, transition uh, metal carbon bond lengths, uh, which would be a, a sort of uh, uh, multiply bonded and should have a very short distance. We had seen that uh, reflected in the uh, transition car uh, carbon bond length, both in the Fisher type as well as uh, the Schrock type. Similarly, a, a the infrared Raman spectroscopy was used uh, in quantifying the electron uh, richness of the carbon center uh, by monitoring the uh, stretching frequencies of the uh, transition metal uh, carbon which were trans to a NHC ligands. Uh, so, oh, these, uh, uh, these uh, threw light on the electron richness, uh, uh, electron richness. Uh, of uh, Cr2 o moiety uh, uh, bound to a transition metal. Uh, the bond length and the X-ray similarly through uh, gave ideas on the bond length on the strength of the uh, uh, Cr2 bond uh, uh, like through light on of Cr2 uh, uh, transition metal Cr2 bond uh, that we had seen uh, in terms of that being multiply bonded and shorter bond length. Similarly, uh, we had also uh, uh, looked at uh, the, uh, the chemical shift in the carbon NMR uh, 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 which uh, uh, was widespread chemical shift of carbon NMR was uh, widespread. And uh, that did not uh, provide uh, any indication as to the reactivity of the type of the carbines that are uh, studied. So, uh, of these three, even though uh, uh, the carbon 13 could characterize these moieties, but they were uh, they did not provide any insight onto what kind of reactivity uh, this uh, carbon moiety would. Uh, exhibit depending on the chemical shift. Uh, whereas, uh, uh, IR uh, uh, or Raman studies clearly sh he gave a method for quantification of the electron richness of the carbonic center as well as X-ray uh, uh, diffraction study uh, by looking at the metal carbon bond length were also uh, able to give insight as to the strength of this metal carbon bond as to with re, uh, uh, the multiple bond uh, nature of this metal carbon bond leading to its greater uh, strength. 
Now we are going to continue this discussion in more, bit more detail and we are going to look at another most powerful technique uh, for characterization of uh, this metal uh, carbon moiety and that is from the perspective of proton NMR. Now, Proton NMR is a, a very a common uh, ubiquitous tool that is used for characterization of all compounds and this is uh, no different in case of uh, organometallic compounds too. So, they provide a very uh, useful and effective uh, method for uh, characterizing uh, these organometallic compounds and uh, we are going to uh, uh, be discussing this uh, uh, the effective use of proton NMR are in providing insight onto the uh, metal uh, uh, carbon moiety. So, this is uh, uh, from the perspective of how does uh, proton NMR can be effectively used uh, for characterizing uh, metal carbon complexes. For example, uh, proton NMR give the proof of multiple uh, multiply bonded nature of uh, metal carbon moiety as well as uh, multiple bonded nature of uh, CX uh, double bond character. And uh, the same uh, can be uh, seen uh, from uh, uh, the proton NMR of a Fischer carbon complex, particularly for a pentacarbonyl, chromium, C, O, methyl, methyl. Now, this uh, geometry uh, uh, is called uh, uh, a trans geometry, trans with respect to the, uh, the 2 methyl and uh, in the solid state, in the, uh, in the solid state it exclusively exists in the trans form. transform uh, prevail uh, and uh, as a result uh, if one were to record uh, uh, proton NMR uh, of these compounds there are two, uh, two methyl uh, resonances, uh, two types of uh, methyl uh, resonances, uh, one is methyl another is OME uh, and for OME uh, there is only a, a single resonance uh, in the transform uh, whereas Uh, in solution, uh, this compound exists uh, uh, in the both uh, uh, cis and the trans form and that equilibrium can be given as this. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, the cis form. So, in solution at, uh, at minus 40 degree centigrade both cis and trans forms exist and as a result uh, there are four proton NMR signals, you know. Uh, so, uh, resulting in uh, four proton NMR signals uh, two from uh, the cis form and the two from the tra trans form whereas, uh, 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 in the solid state where only trans form exists. Uh, that would exhi uh, exhibit only two proton NMR signals. 
if one were to uh, uh, record NMR of it, uh, but in solution, uh, the, the sort of inter uh, interchange uh, between cis and trans. Now, this is a, a very important observation that in solid state you have only trans form exclusively, whereas in solution you have both the forms uh, cis and trans. Uh, what does that imply? Is uh, that implies that there is a rotation along the CO bond. Now, this rotation of the CO bond would allow the, uh, the for, uh, interconversion between cis and trans uh, and this rotation is supposedly quite fast because uh, uh, at uh, uh, minus 40 only you can see the interconversion happening. So, this rotation happens at very uh, uh, fast uh, time scale and that is why uh, uh, you have to uh, really go down at temperature of minus 40 to be able to uh, slow the rate of uh, conversion uh, uh, between the cis and the transform. And higher temperature uh, owing to very rapid exchange, uh, a coalescence is observed coalescence of is observed at high temperature and one can sort of estimate the activation barrier uh, for this exchange which is about 52 kilojoule per mole for the rotation along the CO bond mm, uh, that uh, for the rotation uh, along CO bond. So, uh, what it uh, 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 provides a useful in insight in terms of uh, the uh, ability of the uh, CO bond to rotate uh, by looking at the spectroscopic signature. And this is something which is uh, unique to proton NMR uh, spectroscopy and can uh, not be observed uh, by other uh, spectroscopic method that we had. Uh, discussed uh, in the la last lecture. So, uh, let us uh, sort of uh, study this rotation in a bit more detail. For example, in the ni nitrogen analog or variant of this uh, Fisher uh, carbon uh, complex, uh, particularly where uh, the rotation is uh, not uh, uh, very fast, for example, in this compound where pentacarbonyl chromium methyl with N Me 2, uh, uh, this rotational uh, barrier is high and the rotation is uh, that may, uh, means very slow, the rotational barrier As a result, uh, uh, these methyl groups are non-equivalent and which uh, uh, gives rise to uh, uh, three, three uh, methyl signals. At uh, room temperature. So, these three comes from uh, one of these and two of uh, the N methyl, all three are inequivalent uh, because the rotational barrier is high uh, and that leads uh, to observation of three uh, different uh, signals uh, at room temperature. Now, uh, what one sees uh, is the fact that uh, if the uh, C heteroatom rotation uh, barrier is uh, increased, then the non-equivalent uh, 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 methyl groups or the protons uh, show up and that results uh, uh, in inequivalent uh, spectrum that we observe. Now, in case of uh, Schrock carbene, for example, uh, Cp tantalum methyl uh, 
complex okay now uh, this c mcr2 uh, is very rigid uh, this is uh, rigid uh, owing to to multiple bonding nature as a result uh, uh, non equivalent uh, non equivalent ch2 to protons uh, uh, observed up to 100 degree centigrade. So, it shows that where there is a multiple bonded carbene to tantalum, the rotation is not really possible. As a result, these two hydrogens are inequivalent, not equivalent. And this can be observed uh, from proton NMR and this non equivalency exists uh, up to a very high temperature of 100 degree uh, centigrade. So, uh, what we uh, uh, are seeing that proton NMR is uh, providing some extremely uh, useful uh, insight about the dynamics uh, of these uh, carbene uh, uh, compounds in solution particularly with, res uh, with respect to the uh, uh, metal heteroatom uh, rotation or with respect to the metal carbene car carbonic carbon rotation uh, by looking at the equivalence or non equivalent nature of the substituents on the carbonic carbon or of that on the heteroatom. So, this it provides a very useful uh, method for getting an insight on the dynamics of these uh, metal transition metal organometallic complexes uh, using proton NMR uh, spectroscopy. Now, with that we are going to move on to another important aspect of transition metal organomet uh, carbon chemistry and this is with regard to reactivity of transition metal uh, carbon complexes. Now, as mentioned in our uh, previous uh, uh, discussion that uh, transition metal carbon complexes can be classified into two types Fischer carbon as well as uh, the Schrock carbons and both, both of these carbons have metal carbon multiple bonding character and however, their uh, interaction uh, with the metal uh, is different. For example, for Fischer carbon it is a singlet carbene species which interact with the transition metal uh, whereas, for the Schrock carbon a triplet carbonic species interact with the tra transition metal uh, using the uh, same uh, or similar uh, metal to ligand and ligand to metal kind of bonding. Now, our analysis of transition metal uh, carbon uh, interaction we had seen that uh, owing to this type of uh, metal ligand ligand metal type of bonding that occurs for singlet fissure carbon as well as for triplet uh, Schrock carbon there is a, a, a significant amount of uh, di uh, re uh, difference in reactivity observed for these complexes and uh, they uh, kind of behave in a very different fashion uh, because of their uh, uh, different uh, reactivity that arise uh, because of their different uh, way of interacting with the transition metal. Now, uh, in this uh, uh, few minutes now we are going to look at some of the examples of differential reactivity that this Fischer and Schrock carbene exhibit. For example, Fischer carbene is electrophilic in nature. and reacts with a variety of nucleophiles for example for this chromium c ome 
methyl reacting with C 2 H 5 N H 2 gives uh, pro, uh, methanol particularly from the amine protonating the O methoxy and then uh, give this corresponding C N H C 2 H 5 uh, carbon complex. So, what we see over here uh, that O methoxy has been uh, protonated by this amine to release methanol and this uh, complex of the Fischer carbene uh, is uh, observed. Similarly, other nucleophile uh, like uh, phenyl lithium also works uh, reacts analogously. For example, for this pentacarbonyl tungsten C PH OME complex uh, reacting with phenyl lithium at minus 78 degree centigrade undergoes the attack of the phenyl moiety onto the positive uh, uh, carbon uh, side uh, to give the transition state something uh, like pentacarbonyl tungsten C PH 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 minus uh, which uh, in presence of acid eliminates methanol at very low temperature of minus 78 uh, degree centigrade to give the following tungsten C pH pH carbene complex. Now, what is uh, uh, important to uh, remember over here that the Fischer carbene uh, reacts with a variety of nucleophile and that uh, this attack arises uh, from uh, the uh, carbonic center being uh, partially uh, positively charged and that is because of the carbene to metal sigma donation uh, cannot be matched by metal to carbene by back donation. As a result, uh, there is always a positive charge on the carbene uh, which uh, uh, is the uh, reason for the nucleophile attacking the carbonic center. So, this is a very important feature of Fischer carbene that because of the bonding and the way it shows uh, that the carbon is slightly positively charged and that uh, allows it to react with variety of nucleophiles the way it is shown over here. Similarly, carbenes uh, can stabilize carbon ions carbon ion formed upon deprotonation okay now uh, this is uh, illustrated by very nice example over here zo5 chromium C OME methyl in presence of base CH 3 O N A and uh, deuterated methanol CH 3 O D. What is observed that formation of CO 
5 chromium C O M E C D 3 is formed which indicates that there is accumulation of deuterium at this uh, methyl moiety and that happens because this methyl gets deprotonated uh, to make a carbon ion uh, which is stabilized by the uh, carbene uh, moiety uh, for example, uh, in presence of a base Uh, uh, this uh, methyl uh, gets uh, deprotonated uh, to give methanol and the corresponding carbon ion this carbon ion is then uh, stabilized by uh, resonance to uh, in this canonical form and this when treated with CH3OD he, he protonates uh, uh, or puts uh, deuterium on this methyl moiety uh, and uh, after several such species it gives CDO3. So, what we have done is uh, that in the uh, uh, that the carbon ion which is formed by the deprotonation of the uh, methyl uh, moiety is stabilized by the carbene and uh, that is because of the electron uh, deficient nature of the carbonic carbon. Now, let me uh, uh, summarize what has been taught in uh, this lecture. We have looked at a proton NMR as a useful characterization technique to gain insight in the carbon metal uh, complexes particularly that provides insight into carbon metal bond rotation as well as CO uh, carbon heteroatom bond rotation and uh, leading to different kind of uh, uh, resonances e equivalency and non equivalency of resonances uh, leading to different kind of cis or transforms of the carbonic structure. We have also uh, looked at differential reactivity arising uh, uh, from the uh, nature of charge accumulated on the carbonic carbon for Fischer and the carbon uh, shock carbon uh, complexes and for the uh, Fischer one we had looked at uh, the nucleophilic uh, addition at the carbonic center uh, with various uh, nucleophile and also we have seen that ca uh, Fischer carbon can stabilize uh, carbon ions forms upon deprotonation uh, and this was proved using uh, isotopic experiment where one uh, uh, sees the accumulation uh, proton, ex proton deuterium exchange in form of the example uh, given over here. So, with this I conclude uh, uh, this uh, lecture on uh, characterizations of transition metal carbon complexes and we are going to uh, discuss more about the reactivity of transition metal carbon complexes in the forthcoming lecture uh, uh, which will uh, deal about differential reactivity of both Fischer and uh, Stroke carbon complexes. Uh, uh, so, till that uh, time goodbye and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thank you.